microphone. Get a new phone, can't leave. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a new phone. Get a phone. I need to get a new phone. My phone right there. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. When I call to order the meeting of the Philadelphia City Commissioners Board of Election for Wednesday, October the 9th, 2024. This meeting is in compliance with the Pennsylvania Sunshine Act. The Philadelphia City Commissioners are a three-member bipartisan board of elected officials in charge of elections and voter registration for the City of Philadelphia. Each commissioner is elected to serve a four-year term that coincides with the municipal election cycle for mayor and city council. The commissioners set and enforce departmental policies to administer voter registration and conduct elections in accordance with federal and state voter registration and election laws. The city commissioners were created by the Pennsylvania Assembly in 1711 with a focus on taxation and held various regulatory powers throughout the centuries. The commissioners started maintaining voter lists in 1799 and took on more election-related responsibilities, but didn't emerge in its current form until the adaption of Philadelphia's Home Rule Charter in 1951. We will start off with public comments. Before beginning their comments, Commenters shall state where they live or if they are not a resident of Philadelphia and that they are a Philadelphia taxpayer. Public comment is not an opportunity for dialogue or Q&A. It is public comment, a chance for you to tell us what you think. Each speaker will have two minutes to speak. However, I may extend the time at my discretion. Public comment must concern matters on today's meeting agenda. Finally, it is my responsibility to preserve the order and decorum of the meetings as such. Profane, slander story, discriminatory, or personal attacks will not be tolerated. If you wish to make a public objection to a perceived Sunshine Act violation, please raise your hand and I will recognize you. Outbursts will not be tolerated. Anyone wishing to offer public comment, please step forward. Having no public comments, we will now move to a report from Secretary for email public comments. Commissioner Bluestein, are there any email public comments? Yes, there was one uh, email public comment. That comment was emailed by 9.45 a.m. and shared with the commissioners and deputies at 10 a.m. Uh, and have been provided to each commissioner at the beginning of this meeting. They are also available at the public comment table. Uh, this comment was from Michael Swayze related to the efforts by the commissioners to notify voters of ballot deficiencies and what they can do to correct those vote, those errors. Uh, I've reviewed the comment and I ask that it be moved into the record. I have also reviewed it and agree that it should be moved into the record. I also reviewed it and please move it into the record. We will now proceed to old business. First, we have a report from our directors of election administration and operations, Mr. Joseph Lynch and Mrs. Stephanie Reed. Joe, we'll start off with you. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. This is our sunshine update for October 9th, 2024. The warehouse unit has been working to prepare machines for the general election. For our voter registration report, the election cycle to date, we have processed 353,863 voter registration applications. 187,850 of those applications were paper. As of right now, they have a backlog of 3,700 applications. Delaware and Spring Garden is currently working to eliminate the backlog and making necessary corrections. As of Tuesday, they have approved 169,456 vote by mail and absentee applications, which is 14,645 added from last week's total. Of those, 87,484 are paper applications and 81,972 are electronic applications. This includes military, civilian overseas, and federal voters. There are, they, we currently have a total of 1,624 applications waiting to be processed. Of those, 403 are paper applications and 1,221 are electronic applications. As of October 8th, we have sent out, 100, sent out 166,654 
vote by mail ballots for the 2024 general election. Voters who have not re yet received their ballot or need a replacement can visit our website to request a replacement ballot or visit one of our satellite offices for assistance. ID verification letters have gone out to voters to either, who either did not include the required proof of identification on their absentee slash mail-in ballot application or their proof of identification could not be verified by the County Board of Elections. Voters who have received this letter may submit their proof of ID to the County Board of Elections via email at phillyelections at philly.gov, fax, U.S. mail, telephone, or in person. Voters have until 5 p.m. on November 12th to return their proof of identification for the general election. Our satellite office in City Hall, Room 140, is now open. Voters can, re can request a mail-in or replacement ballot in person and, and return it all at the same visit. Office hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Voters who would like to vote by mail for the November 5th general election can apply for a mail-in absentee ballot at vote.phila.gov. The deadline to apply is Tuesday, October 29th at 5 p.m. The poll and place unit is working on confirming locations for the November 5th general election. Presently, they have confirmed 372 of 374 private locations. Public locations have been approved aside from any rebuild projects. There won't be any more proposals to relocate, re relocate after Friday at noon due to notifications needed to go out no later than Friday's, Friday's business day. The final hearing will be October 16th, which is the, late, the last day to propose a change to the commissioners without a court order. The election, board, the election board unit is working on confirming board workers through calls and emails. They have 7,398 confirmed so far, but 795 have declined, and they've left 428 voicemails. In a general election training session, 1,797 board workers attended, and 2,245 confirmed for schedule and tra for scheduled training. We have a total of eight satellite offices open to the public seven days a week. On Friday, October 11th at 11 a.m., we have a grand opening at 6100 Woodland Avenue. The 6420 Frankfurt Ave office will be open by this weekend to the public with a press event scheduled for Tuesday, October 15th at 9 a.m. You can find a list of all satellite election offices open to the public and hours on our website, vote.phila.gov. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Vice Chair, did you have any questions for Joe? I have none. Thank you. Secretary, do you have any questions? I have none. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for you, Joe, but I'll wait till after Stephanie do it. I guess maybe both of y'all can maybe address it. All right. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I'm pleased to address you today and share updates from our administration <coughs> report for October 9th, 2024. This past week, with only four weeks to go, we continued our preparations for the general election. In budget and procurement, the team has been focused on the normal processing of invoices and purchase orders, addressing any related issues as they arise. We're working with procurement to get our final orders approved for the general election. In communications, we've been designing requested materials, including social media graphics, updated procedures, documents, and signage for the warehouse and city hall. Requested updates were also completed for Pack Your Ballot posters, the department's atlas tool, and one-pagers for our SEOs, satellite election offices. Additionally, we've been planning for general election communications, including sessions with our consultants and providing input for the paid media campaign. Regarding engagement, we're distributing materials at the Hung Chow Thai Hair Salon, Cambodian Buddhist Society Temple, Oregon Market, and First Oriental Market. Our efforts also involve sharing flyers for poll workers and interpreters, encouraging voter registration, recruiting bilingual interpreters, and engaging with the community through feedback and questions at events. We continue identifying hair salons, temples, and churches where we can distribute election materials. We're scheduled to table at four community events in the coming week. In human resources, we are currently hiring for 23 temps. As of now, our total workforce stands at 214 employees with 180 in civil service and 34 exempt. This includes 56 clerk ones, 33 clerk twos, 17 clerk threes, 
nine trades helpers, nine voting machine techs, and 37 temps. We are continuing with new hire activities and preparing for upcoming orientations. Our IT team continues to work on setting up all IT components for our last two satellite election offices. They've been updating surveys and sign up forms, posting notices, and maintaining our website. They've also begun creating the call center, asset retrieval center, and poll worker dashboard. The team is finishing new phone setup with the help of surge staffing from the city. With four short weeks until the general election, our staff are working well together to solve challenges as they arise. I'm impressed with the continued growth and collaboration that's occurring and thank our staff for showing up every day and giving their best. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair, did you have any questions? I do not, thank you. Secretary, do you have any questions? I do not, thank you. Uh, Stephanie, I just had one question, I guess, going back to procurement. Uh, how's everything going with the scanners? So, um, not good, not, not good, good at all. And, good. and the reason is because uh, there are only two scanners that are approved by the Department of State. And the one that we have been using was at the end of life. So the manufacturer does not have any more. Um, we have tried a number of different things to get them mm -hmm. and have not had any success. But it's because we can't even find any to buy is the problem. Okay, so we need to maybe schedule something after that, and I you know, thank y'all, but now it's time to activate the commissioners, see what magic we could pull. Yeah. Because we need some scanners, so we need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Vice Chair, you have any questions? I, I do not. Okay, then I heard you, heard you talking about that. That was really good. Okay, and I guess both of you, there's an issue with the drop box over at uh, Fairmount. Is the drop box, I know the drop box is not open right now, right? Right. Okay, so no. do we have any idea when it's going to be open? What were the issues? That way we could sort of like, you know. We have numerous P IT people out there looking at it's, what's happening is it's going up, it's going down. We, it goes, when it goes down, we put our official sign on there, uh, and then it goes back up. We go out, take the sign down and then it goes back down again. So we're just leaving it down until we get it fixed right. There's something going, I know our IT department has been working hard and diligently on it, along with other city agencies to try and find out what the problem is. Okay, so I was told that uh, Streets Department was more Street, or less the... Yeah, they're, they're going out there also. They're trying to find out why it keeps dropping. You know? Okay, because uh, I've been receiving a lot of phone calls and a lot of yeah, emails and, about this. And I... I I appreciate it, but w w we put a official sign on there in trilingual languages and pointing them in the right direction on our website to go to the closest drop box to take them. I mean, that's probably one of our busiest drop boxes. It's, it's, it's a shame, yeah. So again, yeah. I just want you all to know that you have a resource yes. with us, whatever it is that we could do yeah. to be helpful or escalate whatever we need to escalate, because I do understand that there are different things with the different departments. Hasn't been a hold up on anybody responding. They've been incredibly responsive. It's that everything that we've changed, which so we started with um, the, we looked at the, the camera has been replaced. The power source has been replaced. The, um, I forget, the nib has been replaced. So like we're going through those steps and what happens is it looks like it'll fix it for a minute and then it starts having the problem again. So then we call the other department out and they have been very responsive. Um, they are trying the last thing right now, and I think everyone should have a detailed email from Jeff that he sent before this meeting outlining all of this. I don't have it. And again, even okay. something as serious as that, yeah. you know, that deserves a meeting, that, deserve, that deserves a phone call, you know, all these different things that we want to work on, and we don't want to just, you know, brush past that, that's all. Yeah, so they're, do, they're doing the last thing right now, and after that, I don't know what else to do to be honest. I mean, it, it is a real, it's a real situation because they can't figure out why it keeps going down. Okay. So again, we need to schedule a meeting uh, after this, I mean, with the deputies and we need to definitely need to button up on that to make sure that that's there. But again, any issues that come, I want you to know that the commissioners are your friends and you know, we're going to, we're going to get through this. Okay. I think commissioner Dealey has a comment. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would just ask, um, that in the future, 
if there is a, a camera that goes down or a box that is unavailable to the voters, if we could get um, some notification of that prior to the voters calling us and asking us why the box isn't working, because that's how we found out about it. So uh, there should be communication, you know, immediately as soon as that is recognized, whatever the problem is. And I know there are problems come up, but there should have been a communication immediately that said the box at such at Fairmount at the Eastern State Penitentiary has been out of commission. We put a sign up. We'll keep you updated. It should never. It should never be that we're. It's down, and then we find out about it. Thank you. Yeah, yes, Commissioner. That was brought to my attention by the chairman too. He told me Saturday to let it, let you know. So we've been we've been sending notifications out from the IT department. But and like I said, with with this one at. at uh, at Eastern State, it keeps going up and down, up and down. So we're just going to have to stay on top of it. And just to be honest with you, I would just leave it down until we rectify the problem. Instead of keep going out there, pulling the sign off, opening it, closing it, just leave it down. They're just going to have to go to another another box, it's, which isn't far. They can go to Delaware and Spring Garden. And if it was my, if it was up to me, I'd move it to 17th and Fairmount, where there's a health clinic there, and it's a city-running agency. And I'm sure they have cameras out there that work, and we could put it out there. But that's my opinion. And yes, we will let everybody know. We, I apologize. That was me. Thank you. So you said 17th and Fairmont is your recommendation? And I would just say that um, after talking to our IT director this morning, I think that if what they're trying right now doesn't work, that is the next step. Because the only, they've like then they've isolated every different thing, and they can't figure out why. So that would be the next recommendation. So how far is 17th and Fairmount from the, the drop box? It's probably like two blocks down, down the road. Two blocks down? Okay. Yeah. But I don't know because it's just, only because it's this late in the game, but you still do it. Think it's a possibility, a realistic possibility of us putting a new drop box there? Look, I would actually move that box to 17th and Fairmount if we can. We'd have to get the okay from the health department. Okay. Vice Chair? I would uh, respectfully say that moving a drop box at this late in the game um, is not a good idea. Why don't we uh, work together to see if we can get it uh, up and running? It's been running in the past. We haven't had this issue, so I'm sure, uh, although I don't know much about technology when it comes to drop boxes, but I know that that drop box has been functioning without issue uh, for years now, so it shouldn't be hard for us uh, to get it back up. Thank you. Secretary. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, one option we might consider if the technology doesn't get up and running is turning it into a manned drop box, where for eight hours you can have a team of two people at the box. That way it can be opened. Okay. You can allow people to drop their ballots off and then close it when they leave. It's just as a last case scenario, maybe for consideration, just to make sure that voters can get their ballots dropped off. Well, I mean, I don't know how y'all feel about this. I mean, but if we have the manpower, I mean, I think we might could maybe put some staff people out. I mean, today while I was down, I mean, I just have a concern if that's one of our busiest drop boxes to actually have someone there to actually receive the ballots. Well, I'll tell you right now, if you if we stand out there with a bag, there's a possibility that people don't want to give us their ballot. Yeah. So I mean, I've had people come here and I say, here, I'll take your ballot. They don't trust. They don't trust anyone. They want to put it in a box. So. And to be honest, we, we really don't have the manpower to have people standing out there for eight hours a day. Hold on, hold on one second. One at a time. Uh, Chair. Yeah, I, I want to be really clear about this. I don't want us to get um, in the habit of manning a drop box. Let's get a solution. Manning a drop box opens up a whole bunch of can of worms. Let's get a solution to fix a drop box that has been working without issue for years. Thank you. And we are working on it. And just and that tells you if it's been working for years, maybe something went down. We just got to find what the glitch is. You know, and then if it has to be down for a day or two, the sign tells you go to the website. You can go somewhere else to put the, put your ballot in a drop box. So that's that's my opinion. Well, and then gotta... 11 and uh, November 5th there's polling places that are open also. Well, we got that, but again, we are state regulating, state mandated, 
uh, to do these things. So again, we'll have, I guess, a conversation with the deputies emergency meeting to see what can we do to make sure that this box will be open. And again, I echo the sentiments of Vice Chair Deli. I'm not a tech person, but I got other qualities as well to make sure that we get this open. So that's not an option. We'll, the citizens, uh, Fairmont, will be able to uh, to vote the way that they like. Um, so if the commissioners had any more comments on this, we'll move on to new business. Ready to move on? We'll now proceed to new business. We'll begin by considering our first agenda item, a motion to authorize the professional staff to establish mobile drop box location events. I motion to authorize the professional staff to establish mobile drop box events. Is there a second? Second. Sec uh, Commissioner, do you have any comments? I have none. I have none. Okay, Secretary Bluestein, can you please call the roll? Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. The motion passes. And I guess maybe we also can give the deputies to come up with the locations soon. Let's get them out public and then maybe even over in that area. We may even have more mobile events over there since they had their time down. Earlier to better. Earlier to better. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. We will now move to the next agenda item. A motion to approve the 2024 general election ballot canvas procedures. Is there a second? Second. Does any commissioners have any comments before we proceed to vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. We will now move to the next meeting agenda item. Our motion to approve the 2024 general absentee and mail-in ballot application challenge procedures. Is there a second? Second. second. Are there any comments before we vote? I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Motion passes. We will now hear from our polling investigations unit, Supervisor Charlie Stroman. Good morning, morning commissioners. Good morning, Chell. Good morning, Chell. I have 11 proposals for change. The first one will be in the 13th Ward, the 23rd Division, moving out of the Zion Baptist Church back to the nice town, Tioga Community Branch, and that is back to the original location. Having heard the recommendation of professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change for Ward 13, Division 23. Is there a second? Second. Does any commissioners have any comment before we vote? None. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please go to roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sevier. Aye. Please proceed. Next one will be in the 14th Ward, the 1st Division, moving out of Arts and Crafts Holdings to the Simpson Midtown Apartments, and that is back to the original location. Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change for Ward 14, Division 1. Is there a second? Second. Any comments before we vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Please proceed. Next one will be in the 14th Ward again, the 7th Division, moving out of Harrison Homes, PHA, to the Somerset Academy Early Learning Center, and that is moving into its own division. Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change for Ward 14, Division 7. Is there a second? Second. Is there any comments before we vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Please proceed. Next two will be in the 17th Ward, the 6th Division, and the 7th Division moving out of Goss Community Center to the Mount Airy Church of God in Christ, and that is due to overcrowding. 
Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change. For Ward 17, Division 6 and 7, is there a second? Second. Are there any comments before we vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Please proceed. Next two will be in the 24th Ward, the 15th Division, and the 16th Division, moving out of Church of Faith Incorporated to the Mount Isle of Baptist Church, and that's due to a refusal. Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change for Ward 24, Division 15 and 16. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments before we vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Please proceed. Next one will be in the 36th Ward, the 9th Division, moving out of Trinity United Methodist Church to the Lincoln Post 89, and that is due to the church closed. Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change for Ward 36, Division 9. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments before we proceed to vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Please proceed. Next one in the 38th Ward, 11th Division, moving out of Ch Penn Charter Squash Courts to the New Bethel AME Church, and that is due to a refusal. Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change for Ward 38, Division 11. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments before we vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Please proceed. Next one in 44th Ward, 16th Division, moving out of West Mill Creek Rec Center to the Spectrum Health at 5201 Haverford Avenue, and that is moving into its own division. Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept polling place change for Ward 44, Division 16. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments before we vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Uh, please proceed. Last but not least, 56th Ward, 35th Division, moving out of Supportive Behavior Health Resources to the American Legion Post 810, and that is due to a refusal. Having heard the recommendation of the professional staff, I move that we accept the polling place change for Ward 56, Division 35. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments before we vote? I have none. I have none. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dealey. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. Thank you, Charlie. And just for the record, when you say refusal, uh, what exactly does that mean? They refused. <laughs> okay, that's it. This Simply, is the refuse, yeah. And yeah, so they refused. the landlord... Uh, doesn't want to do it anymore. Doesn't want to do it anymore. Right. So it's not the commissioners just... Some, uh, sometimes okay. like a church closed or something, but right. sometimes they'll just say, I just don't want to do it anymore. Right. And just, you know, because sometimes uh, our constituents, sometimes they think that the commissioners are the one that unilaterally move the polling locations. But that's not the case, correct? We never look to do it unless we have to, for sure. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last item on our agenda. Uh, Secretary, I mean, Vice Chair Dilley, do you have any other business to be raised at this meeting? I have none. Secretary Bluestein, do you have any other business to be raised at this meeting? I do not. Okay. I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? Second. Secretary Bluestein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Dilley. Aye. I vote aye. Chairman Sabir. Aye. This meeting is adjourned.